this is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks. What's going on? I'm meaning to do a alchemy synth tutorial. I didn't want to really do one of those type of tutorials where you just go over the basics. That just kind of bores me. And I'm sure it'll bore you guys too. Everybody's all rushing to get a tutorial like that out there. And there's so many out there. What I wanted to do is I want to show you how to sample an alchemy and make a really cool looking synth, bass synth, out of alchemy. So first thing is you need a good sample. And here is my sample that I have. It's a didgeridoo and it's tuned in the key of C sharp. And how you sample stuff, like what I do sometimes is use Soundflower and sample off of YouTube. You can sample off of pretty much anything anywhere. And this is what I got. To learn how to sample using the program Soundflower, just give me a comment below and I'll uh, I'll make a tutorial about that. But right now, this is more about how to make a really cool bass sound. All right, so here's the original sample. That's cool. It's it's a really nice sampled sound. It's in one key and it has a lot of movement in it. It's a very good file recording. So then what I did is I decided to make two different instruments. I decided to do a EXS instrument just to see if I can just do it. Here is the EXS 24 version. I'll just play it. Nice. And then here's the alchemy version. First, let's do the EXS24 version and I'll show you how I did that. Open the EXS up. And you have the, here are the settings. So you just create a new EXS24 instrument and you go in here and you go edit. Open up this window. Then and in here, you just do zone, new zone, and then you just pick your sample from here. You do load audio sampling just or you can drop and drag. And this is the one I dropped in there. It'll come out and it'll span out the whole keyboard. Like so. Now, here's the trick. To go in here, go to view, click this one, zone sample and also zone loop. Now this is how I tweaked it. Since the start and end of the sample, like it ends at around 100,000 is where it ends at. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to start it in the middle. That's where the most interesting movement of the sound is at the sort of at the end of the, the sample. So I started in the middle. On the loop, I engaged the loop but I started the loop just a little bit after the middle and the end right there, but then I put a, a thousand crossover X fade. So that way it doesn't click or pop when it, when the loop starts all over again. So that's why I put that there. So this is one of those things where you just kind of have to play with it a little bit and just hear it the way that you like it. And this is my settings right here. Hit a, a D minor. Once you have all that done, and it'll ask you to save it, and you just save it. I named it as this. Here's the trick. You want to engage this, turn this on, turn the fat on, turn the drive all the way up to like 64% or 63%. Turn the resonance up to like 32, maybe even up to like 35%. The cutoff, I set the cutoff around 60%. And then over here, where it says, where you have your destination and your, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an LFO. I use the filter cutoff right here. 
I'm using LFO2, and I set it to rate of 1 bar. You also want to check that, move, move the VIA out. And then the percentage amount, I set it to like 33, some around 33 or 34%. And so that way it's it kind of gives it nice and smooth. And the other thing I did is I, you know, add a little bit of attack, a little bit of release. So what's happening is, is you get the resonance that comes in and gives it that harmonics, the upper harmonics, the drives just really drive in the sound and the cutoff is where you're getting that, that LFO action. So we'll listen to it again. Cool. So now, the thickness of the sound, or the wide, or, or whatever you want to call it, you notice over here, I have it set from mono, and then I have my voices set to six, and then I engage the unison. So unison really kicks it into overdrive. It just amplifies it like, it's like having six of these voices all at one time. And so that's what I like. Yeah, if we take off the unison, it'll probably sound like this. Kind of Still kind of cool, still kind of cool, but sort of weak. But when you engage the unison and set the voices to six, it just really sounds badass right there. Now, notice I have a limiter on the channel strip. Limiter setting is I got a plus one on the gain, output level negative 0.2, and then under here I have precision mode. And that's my limiter setting. So if you don't have your limiter, you're going to be clipping. Or that you just turn down your volume halfway or something like that. So that's what I have for this. The hardest part is just going in and and making sure that you go to here to view, sample, and loop. And make sure you tweak the sample start and sample end. And also on the loop, make sure you hit the crossfade. And... Also, the other thing I had to do was I had to make sure that I tuned the to like a, a C sharp three. I could probably tune it down, maybe like C sharp two, but I don't care. It, it's good enough. I like it. It sounds really cool. So that is the EXS twenty four. Really nice sample from this guy. Now let's talk about alchemy how I sort of wanted to do the same thing that I did with the EXS24, but I wanted to do an alchemy, but just a little bit different. Alchemy is cool because alchemy kind of has the same type of sampling, but a little bit more powerful. In alchemy, there's not really a unison setting. They have unison, but it's more like you have to go into, for your source over here, you have to go into VA mode, and you could do this little thing right here tweak this to, I think it has like up to 600 unison voices in the VA mode, but the problem is when you're in VA mode, it doesn't give you the ability to do unison on samples. I'm like, okay, all right, that's fine. I mean, you could probably add in like a saw wave and, and do it that way, but I didn't really care. So let's go ahead and let's take you to the part A first and show you how I did this and how I added the sample. The very first thing you want to do is you just want to go file you can do a file clear. And that'll basically, I'll initialize everything and I'll, you'll have like these default solways for everything and only one will be turned on, like that. The next thing I did is I just did import audio, like that. And I grabbed my audio file, put it in. And then once I had it in, I went over here to the A channel and went edit. What I wanted to do is it actually recognized the key of the file, but it set it to like D flat minus one or something like that or, or one. And I, I wanted to pitch it up just like an octave or two octaves. So that's what I did there. It's this little key. And D flat, same thing as C sharp. So the next thing I did is I also wanted to tweak my, my loop and my crossfades and make sure it doesn't click when it, when it starts to reloop. So, and how I got around that is, is I set it the, the mode to continuous. You could do a uh, sustain, sustain will work too. Forward and backwards kind of cool, it, it, it'll go like that. But I, I was 
it just didn't really work that well with, with the uh, crossfade. So I like continuous. Zone fade, I use power. I mean, that's kind of default. You can use that. Now, the tricky thing here is you want to make sure that this is turned on, this loop crossfade. See how that, and you just turn that on right there. And what you want to do is you want to put it right in the smack dab in the middle of your of your loop crossfade. Now here's your your loop your loop and start point is right here. So I kind of set it sort of at the end, and I put my crossfade right in the middle. Now here's my my start and here's my end. My end I don't really care because it it doesn't really matter because once it goes into the loop, it doesn't it never really hits the end. So. That's what's going on there. And once I had that all set, you go ahead and just close that out. And then I went over here to global, did a little bit of filter action. So on my A point right here, I have a cutoff. I engage the filter, it's just your default low pass filter. And then you just right click on it and you do, or command click or whatever, control click. And you just do LFO. I just picked LFO one. So over here on LFO one, you could see I have just your basic sign shape for my LFO. And then I just set sync. And then the only thing it is, I just changed the rate to one. Right here, you just tweak that. And then how I adjusted the value of the orange line that is my LFO line. And just make sure you click on the knob, and I'll show it is the uh, depth. The depth is set at 70%. And that'll, ch that'll change it, see? It moves as I move the depth. So, you know, something like that. So that's cool. Now I have a little bit of LFO action going on, and it goes in and out, and it's over, you know, one bar length. Nice and slow, and gives a lot of movement. I could probably set it to two bars, but I, I like it for now. I'll go back to global, and you just go in here, and you just do copy source, then go over to B, and you do paste source, same thing over C and D, and make sure you turn these guys all on. And then what you want to do is you want to detune them. And how you detune them is you go into A, I didn't do any detuning for A, but for B, you can see over B, you see where this says fine. I just basically, I just detune one this way, a negative 10. The C, I, I did this a positive 13, and the D, I did like a, a positive 9. You know, just something like that. I wasn't really trying to go for any type of mathematical equation here on my tuning, but I just want to just detune all of them. And, and that was nice. And you notice that when you copy them all over, they keep the same LFO setting and all that. Now, check this out. Now, after I did all the detuning on all of them, I went in and for my A one, I set this reverse. So basically what that does is it reverses the sample. And I also did that for my C, reverse. You can see in the B, no, not reverse, and the D, not reverse. So what that does is it really tears up the sound. So you get two different samples going one way and you get another sample going the other way. And it really sounds cool. It gives it even more movement and more distortion. So I thought it sounded cool. So that's why I did the reverse. The next thing, yeah, I did even some more work on this, is in the edit mode over here, you'll notice that you have A, B, C, and D. On my A, I have it set for D flat two. Now look at this, my B, same thing again, B flat two. Now look at my C. My C is set for D flat is a higher octave and my D is a higher octave. So it's even more crazier. Now keep in mind that when you do copy a source over that that it will sometimes erase your crossfade. So just make sure that you go back and double check to make sure that your loop crossfade is engaged for all your sources because and just make sure it's right in the middle here, you know, so that way you'll be able to crossfade. Very nice. At least it happened to me was is it disengaged this so just just double check make sure that crossfade is there for all your sources so once i did that it's set for sampler mode for all of them go to global change my volumes 
varied my volumes on different ones. Voices, I just set it to all, always. I don't think this is really going to matter. Because there's not really any use. So this, this is not going to matter. Right here, you could do legato. I don't think it's really going to matter. Your voices. So my ADSR setting is, is set for, you know, just a little bit of attack. The hold, I have the hold, like, two or three. You could tweak that wherever you like. Decay is 31, 0.31. Sustain all the way up. Release. A little bit of release. So that's what I have for this. And then once you hit like a D key, it sounds like this. Nice. So that is my settings for the, I call it the Digger Bass. And it's a really cool sound that you can get out of Alchemy with just one sample. And then after you got all your settings done, you go over here to Effects. And I just put in a Convolution Reverb. It's down here, right here. And I was just picking a reverb for the main. I set it to Vocal Plate. Or you can just do file, nice cave. And then then what I did is I tweaked my dry and then I lowered my wet and then put a little nice fade out. Something like that there. So that's a nice little reverb. The reverb's the alchemy, it's very nice. You can hear it. That's really nice. I almost I in a way I kinda like the reverbs better in alchemy than I do in logic. I'm kind of trying to think of a way where I can hack, like create a bypass in alchemy where I would just engage to reverb and I could put it like on a bus or something like that and send other instruments that are not alchemy and put it through one reverb. Kind of like the way you do it for a bus send channel. I'm not really sure you could do that because there's not a real way to let a source come in through a send. But maybe figure it out in a different way. I think I have an idea. That's another video. These are my settings on the Digger Base. If you have any comments, questions, just let me know and I'll answer them for you. All right, guys, stay groovy, my friends. Stay groovy. <laughs>